Breaking the chains of wage slavery. Understanding the problem and finding a way out. Wage slavery is an inherent part of our culture, but most people never really think about what causes it. They mistakenly point their fingers at capitalism instead of pointing it at the real problem, which we will explain in this video. So in this video, we will look at the conditions that create wage slavery, and we will also look at what is needed to escape wage slavery. So what is a wage slave? A wage slave is someone who is trapped in a job and cannot leave due to the financial demands in their life. They often feel miserable and feel trapped, but they also feel that they cannot escape their situation and just have to tolerate it as best they can. So they tend to be negative in terms of their outlook in life because of these pressures. Now, a common misconception is that only low paid employees are wage slaves, but wage slaves can be found at all income levels in life. A wage slave is also someone who has willingly agreed to a social contract that is not beneficial, oftentimes because they think that is the only way to live their life, as this is a system they have been educated to accept. So how do people become wage slaves? Step one, accumulation of debt. The first step in creating a wage slave involves burdening that person with debt, whether it's student loans, credit card debt, or mortgages. While the initial reason for acquiring debt may seem justifiable, such as funding their education or buying their first home, over time, the person becomes trapped in a cycle of borrowing debt and repaying debt. Now the entire education system encourages this process. And in fact, universities are funded by this and are one of the main beneficiaries of this system. And they are very good at churning out wage slaves in their millions. So this is how the system creates wage slaves. It does it through debt. But that is only part of the problem. Step two, selling time for money. Now, burdened by debt, individuals are forced into the second step, selling their time in exchange for wages. If they don't do that, they lose the thing they bought with debt. So now there is a social penalty. The things we have bought on debt will be taken away from us. So selling time in traditional employment has a number of limitations. Fixed income tied to the number of hours worked means we are paid for the hours we sell at a fixed rate. There's a ceiling on earnings because we can only work so many hours in a day. Someone else is in control of our time and they decide what we do and don't do, even in some cases reaching into our personal time as now we are a representative of the company. Additionally, our income stops if we are unable to work. And this is what often happens when people get repossessed or their property gets foreclosed. Something happened in their life that stopped them being able to work, to earn the money, to pay the debt, to keep the banks happy. Now, over time, employers may also demand more for less, especially during economic periods where there is a shortage of employment and an abundance of employees. Step three, consumerism, status, and excess income. Now, the third step involves enticing wage slaves to spend their excess income on consumer goods for entertainment and or status, and even in some cases just for basic necessities. We are constantly conditioned to seek status with the new shiny car, the bigger house, the nicer clothes, the fancier holidays. But the more of this we indulge, the bigger the debt gets, and the more time we have to hand over to the employer so we can pay the bank's debts off. We learn how to become broke at a different level. This is because wealth is taught to be status, whereas genuine wealth is all about owning your own time and having the freedom to do what you want to do with it and to live the way you want to live. So there are the three steps. That is how wage slaves are created. And we have to understand who it benefits. It benefits the banks, the lenders, as they are at the top of the tree, as they are the ones who get wealthy from the debt. If you want to know who is in charge in any situation in life, whether it's in politics, in business, figure out who is lending the money and figure out who is borrowing it. Because the borrower is slave to the lender. And it doesn't matter if it's a company, it doesn't matter if it's a country. If you are borrowing, that means someone else is in control of you and demands certain actions from you. Otherwise, they're going to take something away from you. And this is important because a lot of people think the employer is a problem when in fact it is the banks that are in control of the monetary system. 
the company is very probably just in debt like you. So is your manager. So is his manager. They're all trapped in the system. And here's an investment tip. Never invest in a company that has debt. Always invest in companies that are cash rich because they are in charge of their own destiny and they're much more likely to make a profit. Now, true capitalism is the free exchange of labor, goods and services and allows for everyone to trade their time and skills. They get to own their own parcel of land and live an independent life. And then they can contribute into society from a position of strength. But the current system, which is called capitalism, but often isn't, is infected with usury. And it is this debt in the system that creates wage slaves. And this is what we get trapped in. But only if we choose to stay in it. So how do we get out of it? Escaping wage slavery, a free step solution. Solution number one, stop borrowing. The first step in breaking the cycle of wage slavery is to stop borrowing money. This involves creating a budget, living within our means, and avoiding the accumulation of new debts. And a good budget will create profits for us. Check out my video on how to create wealth with budgets, as that shows you how to generate wealth through budgeting. So while it may be challenging to adjust to a more frugal lifestyle initially, it is a crucial step in gaining financial independence. We cannot borrow our way to freedom because that debt interest is taking the excess profits we are making with our labor and we are then giving that by paying that interest to someone else. We have to budget our way to freedom. Yep, and I know it's a nasty word, budget. But what this essentially means is getting on top of the impulse for instant gratification and learning the intellectual principles of deferred gratification. Solution number two, stop selling time for money. There has to be a shift from selling time to money to creating assets with your time that generates residual income. So instead of focusing on earning money, focus on taking control of your time. Treat time as the most important resource and use that to create assets. There has never been more opportunity to create a residual income based business than there is right now. I have been running online businesses for the last 20 years and the opportunities right now are so abundant that the biggest problem I have is figuring out which one to focus on. And you need to re-educate yourself. The more time you can invest in your new education, the quicker you will learn how to optimize your time. So watch every video you can on YouTube. There are lots of great content creators out there who can show you how to be successful and have already escaped the rat race. And obviously, avoid the AI can make you rich scammers, of course. Pick an area, an interest you have, a hobby you have, and look at ways you can make money out of that online. That is the simplest place to start when exploring business opportunities. If you are on a good income, use your excess income to invest into assets. The more you can invest, the quicker you can retire and the quicker you can escape the system. Solution number three, stop trying to buy status and shiny things. Status or fake wealth, if we don't own it, we don't really have it, is what drives a lot of people's debt-based spending habits. It doesn't matter what salary level we have, if we are buying something on debt to impress someone else, we are seeking status with that person or those people. So we have to ask ourselves this question, are the shiny things more important to us than freedom to own our own time and to choose our own destiny? You see, debt is like a drug. When we take it, we get a real strong hit. You buy that new car or that new house or that new handbag or that new clothing or that new phone. It feels good. When we come down from the drug and have to live with the consequences of taking the drug, then it really starts to depress us. So the car might feel good while we're driving to work, but then sitting in the office for 8 to 12 hours a day being miserable, that's the downside. So we have to wean ourselves off the debt drug. This is the hardest step a lot of the time because we equate social acceptance with status and this is taught to us from a very young age by society. But the key here is to start acting in your own best interests, not to try to please everyone else or to get their respect. Self-respect is what we should seek, self-autonomy. Only then can we start to interact with others in a way that is confident and has boundaries that actually then create the status we seek. When people see that we are in control of our lives, they will respect that and respect us. Now, obviously, there are some people out there just looking to pull other people down to make themselves feel good about themselves, but we're not talking about them. We're talking about other people that are just trying to get through life as best as they can. 
Don't sell your soul to impress people and measure you by the amount of shiny things you wear and own. Now, if you can take these three steps, if you can change your mindset on these three points, you can be free to live your own life on your own terms, in your own way. Now, I'm not talking here theoretically. I have done this, and so can you. You just have to learn to think in a different way than the way you've been taught to think by society. That's what I had to do. That's what everybody who is successful and escapes the rat race has to do. Now, the fact you're watching this video tells me you either want to do this, you're already on the path, or you have already arrived. And if that's the case, just drop some comments below and let me know where you are in your journey and the experiences you have. And if there's anything you want advice about or help with, drop a comment below. Now, I hope you found this video useful. Like and subscribe if you have and want more of this type of content. Also, check out my very popular free marketing training course if you are thinking about starting a new business and you want to learn how to market that business or those products or services that you're going to create. If you would like to support the channel and also learn more about being an entrepreneur and starting your own business, or you need support as you grow your current business, then check out my Business Buddies community, which focuses on all things entrepreneurial, and you can get 50% off the low monthly cost as a YouTube subscriber. Over 300,000 students from around the world have already taken our courses, so we must be doing something right. Thanks for watching. I look forward to catching up with you in the next video.